Basically, every artist starts their work. The key to a rough sketch is start very lightly. You want to barely see your lines, because that way you can make messy lines. You can make them as like messy or as many mistakes as you need to, and then we'll go back and pick out the lines we like and darken those up, and that's how we work around not having erasers. But this is a Tim Burton character. He draws weird. I can show you. Like, look at these characters. Jack's head's a hamburger. His body's a scribble. My favorite is this Jack Skellington. Because he looks like Slender Man. He actually told the artists working on the film when they were making new characters to draw with their opposite hand to draw like him. So if you want to take the Tim Burton style uh, challenge, there you go. We're going to draw a portrait of Jack and we're going to start off with a circle. About the size of a baseball or an orange is a good size here. But if you want to make it a hamburger, go for it. You know, we're all hungry. Very nice and light, added lots of circles here. We're gonna have him facing at what we call a three-quarter view. So he's not facing straight at us, he's turning slightly towards the left side. So top to bottom, add in the stretched out letter C curve or parentheses. And then from left to right, add in the stretched out letter U shape. So if you see a beach ball now, you are on the right track. We're gonna add in his neck as well, as a little bit of his outfit, mainly his bow tie because uh, his bow tie is so cool. We're gonna add in these, like, this number 11, kind of tilted. You should have what looks like a cake pop or a golf ball on a tee right now. But at the bottom of that uh, neck, however long you want to make it, add in this rounded out triangle. Think like pizza slice here, or upside down watermelon slice. Uh, his bow tie is not just a normal bow tie, though, it's an animal, and what animal is it? Yeah, it's a bat. So it's a little bat that's got these little pointed ears on the ends, and they're like these little shark fin shapes. These little ears, you have options. You can make these as long or short as you want. Tim Burton tends to draw them very long in his sketches, but in the movie itself, they kept them very small and short. Probably so they didn't break off during animation, because he is a practical puppet. He is a, a stop motion animated puppet, meaning they have to make all these Jack Skellingtons and, uh, and move them and pose them to animate him. I'm making the outside part of the bat's head really nice and dark right now, so that way it stands out over the rest of my sketch. This is how we clean up our sketch towards the end. So if you don't feel like you're ready to lock stuff in yet, you don't have to. We need to add in the bat's eyes though. Uh, for the bat's eyes, think of these as like a couple of apple seed shapes or a couple of grains of rice here. And I like to follow that angle of that letter B here at the bottom. And if you want to make your bat look really spooky, I like to shade in uh, the outside, just around those eyes. It kind of makes them have this little eerie glow to them there. Uh, but what do bats need to fly with? Yeah, some wings, and that serves as the flare to the bow tie, too. So for the bow tie, for the wings, I'm going to add three rainbows on either side of the bat's head. Uh, think of this as like you're sketching out kitty cat whiskers here. Uh, so the, the rainbows on top and bottom are actually a little bit shorter than the ones in the middle. So you want to make that middle like rainbow very nice and long compared to the top and bottom one. And now you have a cat. Uh, but to make these bat wings, we're going to add the webbing in between. So you want to add these letter C curves connecting each of those rainbows here together. Uh, so that way this bat can fly if it wanted to, but I don't think it would, it's probably dead. <laughs> Now, Tim Burton is the one who created the idea of The Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, but who directed the film? Henry Selleck, yes. He is the one who directed The Nightmare Before Christmas because Tim Burton was busy at the time that, he was, uh, that Disney wanted to make this film. Uh, so he was busy working on another film, you know, it had to do with a bat and a man and he returns. Yeah. So Henry Selleck took over uh, because Tim and Henry both went to CalArts together and Henry was making stop motion commercials. So this movie being a stop motion film, uh, Tim Burton thought, 
Perfect. Excellent. You know how to do stop motion. Now I'm trusting you with my vision. Uh, so Henry Selleck is actually the one who gave Jack Skellington the pinstripes on his suit because in that illustrated book, Jack Skellington doesn't have a pinstripe suit. It's solid black. And that actually proved to be very problematic when it came to the test shots of The Nightmare Before Christmas because he couldn't see Jack. He would just look like a floating head. Uh, so it was Henry Selleck's idea to give him that pinstripe suit. And after The Nightmare Before Christmas came out, he went on to direct uh, a couple of other stop motion films, such as Coraline, James and the Giant Peach, as well as Wendell and Wilde. So keep your eye out for uh, Henry Selleck. He's been doing a lot of good stuff. Everyone have a fancy looking cake pop now? Yeah, it's like very dressed up for his black tie event. We're going to add in his face now. For Jack, being a skeleton, doesn't have eyes. He's got eye sockets. He's got these nice big uh, ovals here. So his eyes really fill up that space. You just want to sit it on top of that horizontal guideline there. And you just want to draw in these really large, like, almost like egg shapes. They're, they don't have to be perfect circles there at all. But keep in mind the turn of his head. He's at that three-quarter view. So his eye socket on the left is actually not going to be as wide as the one on the right. It's going to be a little bit on the thinner side. Now we're going to fill these in solid black. So both of these oval shapes go in and fill them in all the way through. This is actually a look that Disney did not like for Jack Ske a Skellington because if you hear the baby out there, it's like, this is, that's what happened. <laughs> they thought it was too scary. It was like, no, I don't want to look at it. Well, that's what Disney thought would happen anyways. And so they actually asked Tim Burton and Henry Selleck to put like eyeballs in Jack's head. And they were like, no. So. Uh, Disney actually didn't put their branding on uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas when it first came out. They actually put it under a different studio that they acquired called Touchstone Films. And of course, the film did great, you know, kept Hot Topic in business after all. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Disney changed their mind a few years later and put the Disney name right back on it. We're going to add his nostrils here. He doesn't use these nowadays, so they're like withering away because he's dead. <laughs> I'm just adding a couple little commas in between his eyes. Or eye sockets, lack thereof, he doesn't have eyes. You can go back in and start locking in the outer parts of his head now. And it doesn't have to be perfectly round. It can have some dents and some bumps and grooves to it. Uh, but Jack Skellington... I love this movie mostly because of its music, right? Everyone really loves the songs that came out of this film. And they were written by who? Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman, yeah. And Danny Elfman provides a couple of uh, vocal uh, part. Yes, exactly. He sings in this movie, basically. And he is Jack's singing voice. He also uh, sings for like a couple of, like I think, one of the trick-or-treaters as well. Uh, but he doesn't act for Jack. He doesn't say Jack's uh, speaking lines. Uh, they actually had to pass that off to a guy named Chris Sarandon, who you might know from The Princess Bride as the evil Prince Humperdinck. Yeah. Uh, he provides the speaking role for Jack because Danny Elfman can't act. He's a good singer, but the acting wasn't quite where they needed it to be. Uh, so for Jack, the last thing we're going to add in is his smile. And you can make him talking. You can make him singing if you want to. I'm going to stretch across this really big skeleton grin. If, it, if he was alive, it would go from like ear to ear. But because he's dead and he can take off his head, it goes from eye socket to eye socket. Add in these straight lines that go across his smile. Just a couple of notches there. The more you add, the creepier he's going to look. But the last and final step that every artist needs on your sketch is going to be your signature. So find a good spot somewhere next to Jack and sign your name. All right, now that we're finishing up, did you guys have fun? Yeah. Yes. I want to see how all of your sketches turned out, even if you're not quite finished just yet. Actually, who took the timber and challenge out there? Who did the opposite hand? No one. Oh, goodness. Well, on the count of three, turn your boards around, right? One, two, three. Let's see Jack. Look at these. Very out there. I'm loving all of these different styles that I'm seeing him in. Very nice 
bow ties out there. Nice big jacks over here. Nice and dark with your line work too. Look at that, that's great. These are looking fabulous. They are looking dead on. Give yourselves a big round of applause. You all passed the Animation Academy. Great job, everyone. Now these drawings are for you to keep and take home with you as a souvenir. I'm going to leave you here with Cami. She's going to help you guys on out. If we don't get to see you for another class though, we hope you have a great rest of your day and class is dismissed.